Uh, I'm Maria Alaprando. I'm a gameplay designer, and I am a creature combat designer. Uh, I'm Nick Conkle. I'm the lead gameplay and combat designer. Uh, Brian Wheeler. I'm the lead PvP designer. Um, although, I mean, I think Elder Scrolls games, the, the combat itself has evolved um, over the over the course of the various games, such that it means different things. But I think the the simple and obvious answer is is the ability to pause. Right. Um, a lot of a lot of Elder Scrolls combat is based off of all right, I have this set of things I'm capable of doing, but um, it, you know, sort of I have to pick the, the, the two that really uh, I associate with, the, with this particular battle. And if I want to change them, I just pause the combat, put in a new one, load that up, and fire it. Um, and that obviously doesn't work in an MMO sitting. Um, so uh, that, was, that was sort of the main reason. Um, and then I think the other, and, and, and probably subtler, but also more fun reason, uh, is, is, has to do with the challenge of the project as a whole, which is we really want everyone to have fun playing it, right? It is, a, it is an RPG that is just fun in and of itself. Uh, and that meant that people who are used to playing Skyrim uh, and, and Elder Scrolls games had to enjoy it when they, when they first picked it up. And people who play MMOs had to enjoy it when they first picked it up. Uh, and the combat system is really meant to be fun in and of itself. Um, and if it was derivative of one thing or the other, I think it would only be fun to one specific set of people. And we wanted, we wanted to get that, that sort of fusion that, that would make everyone really excited. Uh, and that, so that was what we aimed for. So each monster type has its own distinct, unique behavior that it'll present to the player. Um, a frost mage might throw a blizzard in a line at a group. A fire mage might put down an area of denial. Um, a foot soldier might put down a pool of uh, oil that will slow the player. And we found that when we put those uh, unique behaviors together, we found that really unique situations would come up and really tactical situations. So we just started evolving that through all the monsters that we have. So it evolves even down to all the danger that you see and giants. Uh, so when a giant is winding up a big club attack, you can either block it because all players can block, sprint, and crouch, or you can get out of the way by sprinting. Um, so a lot of the way that the monsters behave with each other, we wanted to feel dynamic and also very reactive with the player. We didn't want to confuse the player with a lot of UI or a lot of numbers flying around the screen. We want you to really be uh, invested in what you're fighting at the moment. So we don't really see the need for uh, cast bars. If a giant is winding up a big club attack, you kind of know what's coming. He's going to hit you with a club. You don't need UI to tell you that. Um, another thing is we wanted our combat to be less about success and failure. Uh, living or dying, s killing every mob or not killing every mob. And so what it comes down to is when those monsters present their iconic behaviors to you, you can defeat them and if you defeat them you earn uh, something called finesse. And the more finesse you build throughout a fight, the more rewards that you're going to get throughout the fight and that can include experience, it can even include if you're really good at the fight, items. So we wanted to present not only a responsive and easy to understand, but tactically complex system to players. We also wanted to introduce a way for both casual, experienced, and hardcore players to enjoy the combat. Uh, so it's less about success and failure and more about mastering those skills. So when monsters like the Frost Astronaut puts up a wall of ice, the behaviors that you're going to see from the monsters are the same behaviors that can carry over to the players. So when you go, when you transition from PvE to PvP, we don't flip the game over for you and now all of a sudden it's a whole new game with a whole new rule set. It's the same game, it's the same mechanics, and you've seen those before and you know the responses to them, and you should be ready to engage players in that way as well. We want people working together, um, and on top of that, we want PvE or combat versus monsters to, to work like combat versus players. Um, so there's sort of opportunities for, for what I sometimes call soft synergies, which is something, so, something like where I'm going to lay down an, an area of slow, um, like that sticky oil that the, the guy goes through, and now I'm going to be more vulnerable to other types of attacks if I move slower. Like I can't dodge as easily just because I'm slowed. But there's also these like really direct, obvious synergies like, hey, I put down the oil and then I shoot it with a fireball and now it's on fire and everyone in the area is doing it. And monsters can do that, uh, but also players, right? Uh, and, and players have this huge breadth of things that they can do to set up their friends, right? And 
it's not, well, you know, just to, just to pull out some other examples so I don't keep using that same one, um, if I'm a mage, I can lay down a, a firestorm, right, which is absolutely a good thing to do in general, right, setting people on fire is good, um, and, and, it's, and it's a good area of denial, right, but generally speaking, uh, the enemies could get out of it and then know they're safe, and this is true in, in PvE and PvP, right, it's sort of a general tactic, but if I happen to have a warrior buddy with me, right, he can run in there, um, and this opportunity is presented to him to use Inferno Cyclone, and it'll pop it, and it'll spin really fast and shoot fireballs out in every direction, right? Uh, and now everyone who thought they were safe is getting hit by fireballs, right? Uh, and what that means is, I better play with my friends, right? Like, if I, if I want to be maximally effective, I'm like, yeah, yeah, let me, let, me, let me go set up my buddy, right? And that stuff happens sort of uh, very sort of naturally, right? There isn't any restrictions on it, like, hey, I better have this ability, and you better have this ability, and, and right, or, or we better be in the same group. Like, it's... It's the same way with the monsters, right? They just naturally set each other up, uh, and, and, and players work the same way. Well, the basic goal is that anybody can get into it, and that it benefits everybody on the Alliance. Uh, that's, that's the biggest overall arching theme for the PvP system. Uh, the Everybody benefits from it. Uh, we really want to give everybody, whether they're a PvE or a PvP or, or some mix of in between, uh, a feeling that they are fighting for an Alliance together as a team. Uh, one of the examples I give is that Maria may be crafting something, and she may put it up for me to buy, and then I can use that in PvP, um, whether it be a weapon or something along those lines. Yeah. Or she just got something from a drop from a finesse system. I can then use that, and then she may not be actually in the PvP with me, but she helped contribute to me winning in a fight. So that's all sort of like an alliance feeling. So for me to give back to her, I go out, take some structures in, in the PvP space, and then everybody gets a bonus across the entire game that's of my same alliance. So we want to have not only just, you know, the one section of the game be beneficial, we want everybody to benefit. Uh, the, it is this large persistent um, area, right, sort of the main, the main area, and calling it PvP might be a little bit of a misnomer because it's actually a, a large tactical, you know, alliance-wide war effort. Uh, and so, yeah, you know, there, there's, a, there's a front line, um, as, there, as there is in a war effort, um, where people are engaging in battles, but there's also all sorts of other things that, that contribute to that, right? I could go out and scout and, and look at, you know, and just sneak around and tell people what's going on movement-wise, which doesn't necessarily involve any direct combat. I could set up siege weapons. I could set up reinforcements on my own keeps, right? I could contribute. I could upgrade guards, right? There's just a whole set of things I'm capable of doing uh, that don't necessarily have to do with combat because it's a war effort. Um, and so it isn't so much, hey, PvP, let's just have this, you know, battle, this tight area where we'll just fight and, you know, whoever's left alive at the end wins. Like, no, it's, it's a war effort, and you don't have to be the best at fighting to be the best at the game. The basics of that was, uh, you know, there's, there's things out there to capture one of them being a keep, which you saw in the video. Um, and we do allow parts of that keep to blow up completely and go away for you to breach. Uh, we don't make it a, a, a bottleneck situation where you can only get in through one location. We pretty much allow that you can blow up the whole thing. That does help with uh, that barrier of entry thing where you go out there and set up a weapon and blow up a wall. That does feel really cool to people. Um, it's not like you can blow up the whole thing to the ground, but there are sections you can say, I want to punch a hole through here now. And that does help out with the, the players who are a little scared to hop into PvP. If they set up a treb and launch a big fireball through the air and see it blow up on a wall, they go, oh my god, that was cool. So th those sorts of events we're working on making sure uh, occur left and right. That literally happens. Just yeah. so you know. <laughs> every time. That, voice. Every time, yeah, and that voice too. People scream, that was awesome. Um, that's kind of the basics for it. We're, we're trying to also make it much more player versus player oriented as opposed to uh, killing a specific critter to flip something. We want to make it so that players have to fight each other to be able to control these uh, those locations. Your first two uh, slots, right? Your first two uh, actions are derived from your weapon, right? Uh, and if I pick up a bow, then they're bow attacks. And if I pick up uh, a sword, then they're sword attacks. And anyone can do that, and anyone can be good at it. Um, that that's sort of a touchstone of Elder Scrolls games, um, and and we wanted to make sure that we we included that in here. On top of that, um, if I continue to use that. A weapon over a period of time, I will get better with it, which will give me a, a wider variety of things that I can potentially do with my my weapon attacks. Um, and so, you know, I can I can sort of gain mastery by virtue of having it equipped. But I can still pick up any weapon in the game and be good with it, and that's true of anyone. Right? Uh, and I think that's pretty uh, an essential part of it. 
your, your three, four, and five, uh, your, your, your next three slots are derived from your class. Um, you will have over the course of your progression many abilities and spells that you will get, um, more than three. Um, but you want to pick the three that you feel like is going to support your weapon load in an interesting way. So if I picked bow as my sort of principal weapon attack, I might pick three abilities that are sort of snares, um, and that sort of creates a character that you know you might understand, right? Like, okay, cool, I want to slow the guy and then pick him off and then continue to kite him, because I feel like that's the gameplay I want to do. And your six ability, um, which unfortunately requires this finger, uh, your six ability uh, is your ultimate, right? It's also a class ability, and I will have more than one available to me through my overall progression, but I can only ever put one on my bar because it's really powerful. Um, and you're going to want to pick the one that, that sort of su supports that overall. So I might just pick Summon Frostation Rock, and a Frostation is going to fall out of the sky and smash everyone he lands on and then you know, hang around and start, and start beating on people. And yeah, that totally supports my ranger e bow metaphor from earlier, right? Like, that's, that's the character I wanted to play. Um, the key is... Um, those abilities, uh, like like the weapon, um, I don't. I can start with and use effectively initially. But in order to sort of master, I must play with uh, over a long period of time, which is very much like uh, the Elder Scrolls games, and it is in our own way of, uh, of interpreting that. And then I think the the, the sort of the depth of the system in a lot of ways comes from the fact that you are allowed to swap out those abilities in whatever way you want, as long as you are not currently in a fight, right? So if I'm finding that you know, this, this build just isn't working and I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting countered over and over by whatever sneaky rogues or you know, fireballs, I can, I can take the ability that I feel like is gonna help me in that scenario and build a new character and try it out and, and sort of have this sort of deck building game that is, you know, let, me, let me get the thing that I really wanna do to counter it. And, and I'll have varying levels of expertise with them, but by trying out various builds and various decks, I'm sort of gonna become a master uh, of all of them eventually. People also scream, oh my God, that was awesome when I watched this around. <laughs> that actually does happen. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think, uh, I mean, I, I think the, the general thing is the UI, right? Like I think uh, a lot of the, the previous generation of, of, of MMOs, uh, a lot of the game is looking at that UI and playing it. And there's, there's very good reasons why you did that, right? The latency was such, you know, uh, and, and you know, sort of technical restrictions were such that we couldn't have that sort of fully immersive battle experience because people just weren't where they were, uh, where, 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 they, where you would see them, right? They were somewhere else, right? Um, but we wanted to create an immersive experience because that's sort of the, that's the modern game, that's the modern RPG, right? One in which I look at the world, not at my hotbar, not at numbers that are flying up. I don't execute some sort of rotation, right? Instead, what I do is I play tactically, right? I look at the world, I respond to it, and I decide what I'm gonna do. Um, and, and I think that's sort of the biggest overall difference that ties into one of our sort of our, our, our principal goals, which is like, look at the world, enjoy the world. And that ties into monsters in combat and PvE as well. We really want you to be tied to the world, and we want monsters to present a challenge to the player every single time you fight them, not a speed bump for the player. We don't want fighting monsters to be boring or you eat a sandwich and do five other things while you're fighting a monster. And we want to reward you for uh, executing and moves and uh, fighting against monsters well. So when monsters present their dynamic behaviors, we don't want to confuse you with UI all over the screen. We want you to be in there fighting with the monster at the moment. So I think we really brought that to the genre. Yeah, and to go with that, I mean, looking in the world, if you're looking at your UI when there's 200 people on your screen fighting each other, you're kind of missing out one of the big things that we're trying to do, which is these huge battles. Um, and we actually have gotten to that point where we see lots and lots of people fighting each other on the screen at once already. So we're going to keep pushing that and pushing that. Um, and like they've said, if you're staring at the UI, then you're missing all the fun of just seeing people jumping and beating the crap out of each other. It's really cool. I think, I mean, just starting at the, the high level, right? Like, I want to play games with friends. <laughs> like, and, and I think this, this really provides me with an opportunity to do that. Um, I think. What is true of what, what is true of our game um, is it's not just there's a thousand other people in the world and you know I'll see a few of them right it's not like I'm living in the same city as them and I, some of them are my friends and that's kind of the end of it right like no there is this massive overarching conflict that everyone is a part of and everyone benefits from and so there's this really like uh, you know bonding and, and, and sort of uh, relationships that are formed out of that that is just unique and super cool right like. I actually want the guy next to me to do better because him doing better is good for all of us, right? Um, and and that, that sort of evolves naturally, right? Um, just when we have these shared goals and we're placed in the shared in the, in the same space. 
When you have moves like uh, synergy moves where one move can set up another player, uh, playing together is really a huge benefit in the in when you're just PVEing or questing or something like that. And also uh, kill sharing, we don't walk out monsters for a single player, so if I shot the fireball at him before you were able to swing your sword at him, he's my monster and you can no longer fight him, you might as well just leave and go somewhere else. If you see somebody in the area and they're doing the same things that you're doing, going along with them is going to help you not only be better at combat and you're going to get those synergy opportunities, it's going to help you go through the areas and enjoy the areas as a group. So you don't even have to know the other player to say, oh yeah, I'm going to go with that mage because he's killing the same thing I'm killing and who knows, we might find a public dungeon together and now I've got a guy to go into the public dungeon with, so this is great, you know. It's, yeah. it's not where you see another player and you're like, that guy's killing all my bunny rabbits, I yeah, need like, those we, bunny rabbits. We never make you competitive with your, own, with your own group, right? Like, it's all, it's all inclusive. It's intended to be like, play with them, right? Not only, not only can you share credit for and rewards for everything and, and both of you get full reward, like, which is clearly meant to, to make people cooperate, but uh, we, we give you small rewards for playing together, like now we can do these, these cool extra, you know, special moves that we couldn't do on our own, and then large-scale uh, war efforts, like, hey, if we, if one group attacks this area while we, we defend this area, we're all going to look better, and it just sort of permeates the whole experience, which I think is just incredibly social, right? Like, it's just at every level, there's social elements going on right there, and it's just that's not, sticky. That's not to say you can't play the game solo if, if you desire that. There's a main story, and the main story is tailored for your unique single-player experience, and so we do provide those really thrilling, epic storylines for the player that wants to go through the game that way. Uh, but really, we've made the game for a social environment. And as enemies rise faster than allies, salvation cannot come from one hero.